Knowing how to practice guitar can be really challenging. I've spent years figuring it out for myself and I want to give you five tips in this lesson that will hopefully help you avoid a lot of frustrations that I faced. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. If you've ever wondered how to get your music on iTunes, Spotify, and other stores and streaming services, DistroKid is a great solution. For a low annual fee, only $19.99 as I'm filming this video, you can upload as many songs or albums as you want and DistroKid will distribute them to over 150 stores and streaming services. Plus, they get your music in stores 10 to 20 times faster than any other distributor and unlike other distributors, they don't take any of your royalties. I know people who use and love DistroKid and I plan on using them when I release the music I'm working on right now. And as a bonus for anyone watching this video, they've set up a personalized link that you can use to save 7% off your first year's membership. To get your 7% discount, go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash move forward guitar or click the link in the description below. Tip number one, keep your guitar out. When I say keep your guitar out, I mean keep it on a stand close to where you practice or where you sit. If you have an office and that's where you practice, keep it next to your chair, that's what I do. Not only does this save you the extra step of having to go and get your guitar and take it out of the case, but just seeing it will make you more likely to pick it up. And this may seem like a small thing, but those extra one or two steps, whether it's just in a case or if it's in a case in another room, can be the difference of you practicing or not. So keep your guitar on a stand close to where you practice and where you'll see it all the time. Tip number two, make it a habit. Whether we like to admit it or not, we're all just creatures of habit. Pretty much everything we do is based on whether we've created a habit out of it or not. Some of our habits like brushing our teeth are good habits, they're useful. Other habits like checking our phone every 10 seconds are not so useful. But both are just because they become habits. So how do you make practicing guitar a habit? Well, you want to start super simple. And that could be as simple as just picking your guitar up every day. Like that's the only step you worry about. I actually learned this from Ben Levin, who has a really good YouTube channel that you should check out if you haven't. But he recommended in that video, I watched him talking about it, instead of creating long practice routines when you're first starting out and trying to make a habit of it, to just say, all I'm gonna do and make sure I do every day is pick up the guitar. And the reason is, is that's gonna ingrain that habit in you of just picking it up and the likelihood is once you have it picked up, once it's in your hands, you're gonna play something. It's not like you're gonna just pick it up and put it down. But if you create a really long practice routine, if you create an hour long practice routine before you've gotten into the habit of practicing every day, the likelihood is that's gonna become a barrier to you starting to practice at all because you'll say, oh, I don't have an hour right now or I don't feel like practicing for an hour right now, so you won't even start. It's much better to practice for five minutes every day or less just to start that habit and then as you get used to that habit, once that just becomes ingrained, you'll be able to add to your practice routine and do it for longer periods of time each time you pick up your guitar. Tip number three, write it down. So by write it down, I mean to write down the things you actually want to work on and focus on and get better at. If you don't do this, the likelihood is that you're going to pick up your guitar and you're just going to start noodling. You're just going to start playing the stuff you always play when you pick up the guitar, whether that's a song, whether that's just licks you know, or stuff you're really comfortable with. If you write it down, then you can look at your list and focus on those things and make sure you're improving on the things you want to improve on. I used to create massive spreadsheets with lots of detail and a box for every day to place a check if I practice that day or not, but that becomes really overwhelming and frustrating to deal with. Now I just use a simple app called Workflowy, which is just an app that you can easily create bulleted lists with, and I just write down the things I want to work on and underneath write little descriptions about what I'm working on. And I don't even track the days I work on stuff because I don't want that to become frustrating or disheartening if I haven't practiced that day. So I quickly wanted to just show you an example of a practice routine that I mocked up in the app Workflowy, just to give you an example of how to write it down and how to do it in a way without creating massive spreadsheets that become overwhelming like I used to. So this is just, like I said, a mock practice routine that I wrote based on someone who may be more intermediate. So depending on whether you're more beginner, more advanced, where you are and what you wanna work on, this list will obviously be totally different. These are just examples of stuff you could write down if these were things you were working on. I mostly just wanted to show you how you could write it down in a way that's easy to follow and doesn't become overwhelming. So first I just wrote 
four main things to do, which are to warm up, practice major scale patterns, practice bar chords, and practice songs. And then under each of these, I wrote a little description just to give more info on what to do. So for example, for warm up, what I do is just play chromatic notes up the fretboard and then I stretch my hand. That's just my warm up routine, but that's an example of how you could write that down so it's easy to follow. And then next, maybe after you've warmed up, you wanna work on scales and what you're working on may be the major scale patterns. So you could write down major scale patterns, and then for example, under that you could write, practice one major scale pattern per day in one key, and then under that you could write the scale pattern in the key you're working on. So for example, maybe you're working in the key of G, and you're on pattern one, and then the next day you'd be G major scale pattern two, the next day G major scale pattern three, and so on until you get through all the G major scale patterns, and then you would change it to a new key and start over at pattern one. So that's just a simple way you could write that down and keep track of what you're on. And again, depending what you're working on, your list is gonna be tailored to you. This is just an example. Then next, maybe you're working on bar chords and you could write under that, work on one bar chord at a time until I can switch to it quickly and play it without any muted notes or buzzing. And then under that, you could write down the bar chords you're working on. For example, maybe you're working on the B minor bar chord the A minor cage shape, and you work on that until it's down. And then under that, you could write next as far as the next bar chord you wanna work on once you've mastered the B minor bar chord, and that could be, for example, the G major bar chord using the E cage shape. Again, this is just a simple way to keep track of what you wanna work on, to actually write it down so you don't just noodle, but also keeping it really simple, the list really simple without creating massive spreadsheets that become overwhelming. And then maybe the last thing you wanna work on is songs. So you write songs as your header, and then under that you write down something like, work on songs that I like until I have them down and can play them along with the track. And then under that, maybe you write the song that you're working on. For example, I just wrote Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. And then you could write next, for the next song you wanna work on once you've mastered that, and I just wrote Free Falling by Tom Petty. Just giving examples. Again, totally tailor this to what you're working on. My whole point here is to say write it down, but also don't make a massive spreadsheet that becomes overwhelming. And this is just examples of how you could write it in a bulleted list that's really simple to follow. And I did it in the Workflowy app, but you could do it in a Word document, you could do it on a piece of paper, it doesn't matter, this is just what I use. And again, I don't even make checks for the days I've worked on stuff or keep track of how many hours I practice because to me that just becomes frustrating and overwhelming because if I miss a day, then I feel like I've failed or if I don't have a full hour to practice and I've set it up for an hour, if I only have 10 minutes to practice then I don't even do the 10 minutes because it's easy to get into the mindset of, well, if I can't practice the whole routine, there's no point. So I just keep a simple list and look at it just so I can stay on track and remember what I wanna work on. Tip number four, don't focus on too much at once. I mentioned this in a previous video called 10 Mistakes to Avoid on Guitar, but I think it's so important that I wanna to touch on it again here. What I used to do in the past when I create practice routines is I would just keep adding more and more stuff because there was so much stuff that I wanted to learn or wanted to work on. I wanted to work on scales, I wanted to work on jazz, I wanted to work on blues, I wanted to work on songs, I wanted to work on chords, just so many different things that I wanted to work on. But the problem with doing that, like I mentioned in the other video, is that you just end up skimming over the surface of a bunch of stuff and never mastering anything. It's so much better just to focus on a few things and really master them. And once you've mastered those, you can move on to something else. And once you've mastered one thing, it pours into everything else you do. It makes mastering another thing easier. And like I mentioned in that other video, the best guitarists don't know how to play everything. They've mastered a handful of things and have really exploited those. That's why a great blues guitarist isn't necessarily a jazz guitarist or a classical guitarist, or someone maybe amazing at rhythms, but not amazing at playing over crazy changes. They just chosen to focus on a handful of things and really exploit them. So here we are back in the Workflow app looking at the practice routine that I mocked up that we already went over in the last tip. And I just wanna show you another thing that you could write on your list to help you keep from adding too much to your practice routine all at once. And what I like to do is just keep a bullet that I call future. And all that means is future stuff I wanna work on. So I keep it underneath the main stuff I'm working on now, and I start writing in a bulleted list the stuff that I'm interested in working on in the future. For example, I could write down speed picking. I could write down finger picking. I could write down playing over jazz changes or chord melodies 
or solo guitar, or whatever. These are just examples of stuff you could write down and it could be more detailed than this if there's specific stuff you want to work on or it could just be more broad like I just wrote down and then you make it more detailed once you actually come to it. But in my list I'll keep a bullet that says future with a long list of things I want to work on but that I want to keep separate from the stuff I'm working on now and I keep it closed so that as I'm actually working on my practice routine, it doesn't become distracting to me. It's just there so I always know that I can add to it when I see something else that I want to learn in the future or that once I've mastered something up above, up in here, and I'm ready to add more, I can look in here, see what I want to work on next and add it into my practice routine. And maybe I get rid of something that I've mastered or that I feel proficient enough in. But it's just a way to always make sure that I can write stuff down as I think about them or come across them and it's like, oh, that's really interesting. I want to work on that or that's something I want to work on in the future so I don't forget it. But I also am making sure that I'm not adding it to my main practice routine and overwhelming my list and making it so that I'm just skimming over the surface of a bunch of stuff and not mastering anything. So before I move to tip number five, which is the final tip, I want to give you a bonus tip. And that is remove distractions. A distraction is anything that keeps you from practicing your guitar or cuts your time of playing or practicing short. And with this day and age, with social media, with YouTube, with streaming, with our smartphones, it's so easy to become distracted. We're bombarded by stuff constantly. So if you struggle not to pick up your phone every 10 seconds and check it, or if someone texts you and you have to answer them back right at that moment, even when it's not important, the best thing to do when you're practicing is to turn your phone on airplane mode or to keep it in another room. Or if you can't help but check Facebook or social media constantly, you can get an app that locks you out of those things for a certain amount of time. We're just so easily distracted these days. Like I said, we're so bombarded by stuff constantly coming at us. We need to do whatever we can to keep from becoming distracted all the time if we want to focus on the guitar and really master it. Tip number five, have fun. Yeah! Practicing guitar doesn't have to be something you dread. If it's something you dread, if it's not something you look forward to, you're not going to end up practicing or you won't be able to sustain it. So if you hate working on scales, if you think about playing scales and it just makes you not want to practice, don't work on scales. The more you enjoy doing something, the quicker you'll master doing that. Not just because you do it more often, but because your whole heart's in it. You can practice something over and over and over again but if you hate doing it and you're not really putting your heart and mind into it you're just kind of going through motions and it doesn't mean you're going to get better at it so whatever you work on whatever you play make sure it's something you enjoy playing it doesn't mean it has to be easy in fact it shouldn't be easy if you want to master the guitar but make sure you enjoy it because even if something's hard even if something's difficult if you enjoy it you're still going to do it and you're eventually going to master it because you'll spend a lot of time doing it and your whole heart will be into it. So that's five tips on how to practice guitar. Let me know in the comments if you found these helpful and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and keep moving forward.